So AO3 writers will come back after maybe like a week and be like, sorry, my house burned down. Anyway, here's this update. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Young Eager Writers Podcast. My name is Desiree Brown. I also have my co-hosts. What oh, was I supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Michael Evans here. One of these days we're going to be a little less awkward. One of them. I just know it. And then with us, we have the phenomenal, do you want to go by Mel or Melina? Yeah, Should Mel ask. is fine, either. Cool. Mel slash Melina Kenyon, um, our wonderful, awesome, amazing, patient editor, who is our guest today as well. She has heard our voice too too much, way too much. Um, but she's here to I'm hear the our voice. Desiree tries to make this entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, you know, <laughs> it's funny because I'm so, I'm all over the place anyway. So it's, it's like, I, it, I just feel bad. I'm like, you have to watch me so many times. Like, I'm so scatterbrained. I don't know how you even edit me at all, honestly. So. Honestly, it's kind of fun because you have like such animated expressions. <laughs> so like whenever I'm editing, right, which we can like get into editing this podcast a whole different episode, but like for starters, whenever I'm editing, when someone's talking, I have the like viewfinder on the other person. So when Michael's talking, I have it on Desiree so that I can like catch those little like <laughs> facial expressions that happen. Because Desiree can be entertaining, even when she's not speaking. <laughs> I I hope that that is a positive for you because it has been a negative a in my life. Like, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it is. It hasn't always been a plus because when someone would say something in my face, would be like, oh, or be like, oh god, like it's not. <laughs> it's not good at hiding a lot. So I hope that you find it enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so just throwing it out there, guys, we're going to talk about fan fiction. I know nothing about fan fiction, which is why we have Mel here. Um, and Michael's yeah, definitely going to. What? Completely you, this is what everyone says. I don't know about fan fiction. And then it's like, well, have you heard of Wattpad? And it's like, oh yeah and then like you have this like moment of all the flashbacks to the dozens of nights <laughs> you're staying up underneath your cover all of the one direction fan, fan fictions from middle school like <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what Every it is single one of the one, cool kids. You, it's just mm. like the name yn is flashing over your eyes <laughs> <laughs> i'm okay it's not even like a i'm too cool i don't know fan fiction it's just that like I, I had only ever been so immersed into the world. Like, I know that there is probably millions of One Direction fan fiction. I know that for sure. I'm not yeah. going to out this person, but I knew somebody who's close to me who who got actually pretty popular, I think, with writing their fan fiction. But I haven't written it myself. I don't know any of, like, the lingo um, I know Wattpad, but I've never, like, I didn't, I never spent, like, hours, I think, because I just, I didn't know a lot about that world. Um, I know, like, about Webtoon, but I don't think Webtoon is usually fan fiction. I think it's all, like, original content, right, Ganda? It's not fan fiction, but web it's, comic. like, web novels. Yeah. Okay. Okay, gotcha. But it's like, okay. So, like, the person doesn't have to go through a company to publish it. It's a platform, but it's all original. Yeah. Which okay. is a bit different from something like Wattpad, where if you go to Wattpad or Archive of Our, of our Own, even, like, your OC stories are not going to do as well as fan fiction because people come there expecting to like search a certain character when you say OC, like by the way elaborate oc um oc is original character um so in the world of fan fiction it's 
could be like a character that's not something in canon that you put in um but it's like funky little characters that like people imagine themselves in the world of whatever they enjoy and they put like (laughs) if i wanted to be like absolutely chaotic i could say that like all of our characters are ocs original characters but it's okay. not quite the same thing in fan fiction because there's already a predetermined universe that everyone knows. And like we can get into canon compliant, non canon compliant, but like it's That's a whole for the thing. pros. That's for the advanced players. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm getting there. I mean, okay. It's not for the advanced players per se. It just whether you're writing with specifics of whatever media um in mind or whether you're doing something like an au alternative universe where like you put all of these harry potter characters and be like what if this one went to college as a this major and this one was like a barista (laughs) 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 it fan fiction can really be anything and that sometimes leads to very cursed content but it can also <laughs> lead to very entertaining content so yes. lots lots and lots of uh spice and things in between what i'm curious for your kind of thoughts on is thinking about like fan fiction in the context of like a fandom what is the role that fan fiction plays in fandoms Fan fiction in fandom culture is, like, I think it's, I kind of see it as kind of a glue. Because Mm. usually, like, in a fandom, you're going to have fan art, you're going to have fan fiction. um, And it's something that people can talk about. I've known people who, like, know other people who are in the same sort of, like, fan sphere. And they'll have entire conversations about, like, recommendations of fan fictions. Mm -hmm. Um, And, like, it's just such a community thing, too. Especially for something like Wattpad, where, like, comments are such a thing. It's not as much of a thing on, like, other platforms, but Wattpad specifically. Having that, sorry, social media kind of, like realm of things really helps to kind of bring people together in fan fiction but I think it's kind of a glue just like fan art or like fan theories would be it's kind of the same sort of thing where it's like a major conversation topic yeah yeah that's uh, honestly like now I feel like I really missed out on something because you're right like I like that community around that like it's kind of like <laughs> Michael's shaking his head disapprovingly <laughs> it's, it's not even like you're making it seem like I was like too cool for fan no, fiction no, it's no, not no, it no, 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 no. I don't this is my fan fiction is, okay like you read a book <laughs> and we all know the feeling of it's like a four or five book series and you get to the ending and you're like I hate this ending like I can't believe the author did this to me and then you go this is how I found fan fiction. And I was like, this is horrible. It was like, specifically when I was reading like, Divergent and I'm like, I got to the end of Allegiant and I won't tell you what happens, but it wasn't like an amazing ending in my opinion. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm angry, but like I need to like go somewhere to find find something else. And then there was thousands of stories that were written that were just alternate endings that were literally just alternate endings. And I remember just binging them and being like, wow, I feel like such a sense of closure because like, no, it's not like the story, like it can't replace that. But like a lot of other people are feeling this. I get to read a lot of other stories. And then, and then yeah, from, from there you can, I, I, there's more rabbit holes you can dive down. Everyone has their kind of like entrant in. So yeah, for me, it's like any kind of conversation that you wanted to have the book, like someone's having it in fan fiction and is like reimagining it themselves. And, and that to me is one of the coolest things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think there's so much creativity, like just creativity already in creative writing, like duh. but like to take something that exists before you 
on its own and totally restructure it is so fascinating to me. Um, I want to ask, I want to ask both of you, because again, I'm the newbie here apparently, but what do you think, like, what are the benefits that you got from your creative writing experience? Like what did fan fiction do to help your creative writing? Michael, do you want to go first? I feel like I've talked a lot already. You, you no. really haven't at all. Like, <laughs> no, no, you're, you're going the first. guest. <laughs> no, you're going first. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, I just snorted. Please, <laughs> cut this out. I'm He's just kidding. We, we gotta. Ex- we. we c- <laughs> I gotta just expose myself. That was a bad snort too. <gasps> I'm so embarrassed right now. Oh my God. I don't even remember what I snorted at. I think I snorted at, I related so much to Mel being like, I just talked so much. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, fe- I felt like I just went on like two tangents. I didn't want to go on a third. <laughs> um, but... We're here for. We're here oh, for the I tangents. Guess. I guess. I guess. Um, what was the question? <laughs> what, like, <laughs> how did fan fiction help your writing? Okay, so this is a really interesting question because normally, like, in most of the writing anyone's ever going to see from me, I'm a poet. I do a lot of short, short, short things. And fan fiction, it can be short, but the types I write is lengthy like Hmm. three paragraphs to just like to describe a scene type lengthy um and it's like such a flip for me that like it doesn't feel the same writing for it so for me writing fan fiction can really be an exercise in both like having an excuse to geek out on my knowledge of like a certain media but also having an exercise in like long form fiction because that's not something I normally do and fan fiction is really easy in a way that like you already have the world and if you're like me so I write fan fiction on games I play specifically really um so when I play games, I'm the type of person that reads all the dialogue. I read all the books in the game. I, like, know a lot about, like, the characters, the world, and all of that. And games are really interesting because the player already affects the world. So, building on top of that, having, like, a set world that you have, like, a set character roster... It, it helps for, like, someone like me who gets, like, really invested in things like mechanics and having continuity and oh. stuff like that. Because so then you know Railroad. I... You must know Railroad. Do you know Railroad? No. What? Do you know the site Railroad? No. Oh, you I, have to what, know. What is it? It's I think you mentioned for, it in an uh, episode or two, like, before. It's, like, the it's site a, for, like, Gamelit and LitRPG. Which, like, a lot of the stuff on there is, like, OC content, right? So, like, um, it's not explicitly fan fiction at all, but very much, like, fiction that's, like, grounded in game worlds, very, very much focused on the mechanics of it. There's different kind of flavors of lit RPG. You can have, like, light, but you can also get very, very heavy. Um, But, yeah, it's it's kind of born out of that. Um, And it's really, really popular. So I think you would love Mm. that. No, normally for me, I actually work out of um, Archive of Our Own, which yeah, I'm okay. sure Desiree, Desiree probably hasn't heard of it. Yeah, um, I have not. It's one of the more, like, you have to be into fan fictions to really hear about it, because it's like an older site, almost, it's not for profit, Um and you need an invite, either from the site or from someone who uses the site, to hmm. be able to like post things. Um, 
<clears throat> and those invites can have a waiting list as well. Uh, but it's, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's, they offer like legal support if you get in trouble for your fan fiction. Um, and it's tag based. So you can search for things based off of like tags. So like characters and pairings and content and you can mm. see content warnings and stuff like that. It's really handy. I I like the platform a lot, but um yeah, I haven't I don't know. I'm like weird about games sometimes. <laughs> I, like something about me, I just really latch on to things like mechanics and stuff. Um so not only do I like play games, but I also write games. I write for d and I write for visual novels and things like that. Um, so, and that affects my writing in fan fiction because then I'll be like, oh, I'm writing about these two characters and I know this much about both characters and I know this much about each city. You bet your ass I'm gonna go into that game <laughs> and like take screenshots everywhere my characters are gonna be. Like That yeah. is so first of all, Mel, you're so cool. Like you said you do that you wrote fanfic for games and for some reason I didn't think like I was like what? That's a thing that you can do? That's so cool to me. Like that I think it's just like I'm I realize that there's so many little there's so many communities and inside those communities there's so many little like nooks and crannies of communities in the writing industry that we we don't ever know about or at least I don't know about. So that's so it's cool. It's funny you bring that up, too, because something I find for, like, fan fiction authors specifically, like, a lot of us, even me, myself, we separate our, like, fan fiction work from our professional work, like, 100%. I know there are some fan fiction uh, people who will take their fan fiction and publish it. But I would say for, like, a lot of the community, it's, like, a very distinct divide. Like, even mm -hmm. I use a different pin name for both things. Mm -hmm. um, and I see a lot of, like, fan fiction authors, too, who are like, oh, I'm an aspiring writer. Like, I, yeah. I, I'm writing fan fiction because I feel like I can't write anything better. Which these people don't realize that they're writing full length novels yeah. with chapters, with arcs, all of the stuff. They're just not making like their own characters, which even then who can say that they haven't put in a pre existing like character or trope into their own stuff? Like Yes. If you I write agree. fan fiction, you can write a novel. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> I agree that, that that's a question I want to ask you too. And I, I think it's one too, for people who are listening, I would love to like hear your reaction to this in the comments. Cause it, it's obviously not a question that has like a, a right or a wrong answer, but on that point, like we talk about like fan fiction and then there's like fiction and, I, and supposedly there's a way to separate them. And you're already alluding to like that gray area, but dive into that deeper. What do you think makes or separates fan fiction from real fiction, like truly at its core, because as I think about it, I think exactly what you're saying, which is that real fiction, like my first actual series that I wrote was a young adult dystopian series that was inspired by all the fan fiction that I was reading that made me think, oh, I can build worlds similar to Hunger Games and, you know, Divergent, but make it my own. But it was literally very much inspired by those worlds. So it feels unfair to say that it's not, like, it's not original, but, like, what is original? Yeah, I'm, that's, like, such a good question, too, because if you think about it as well, like, legitimate books that are considered fiction for, like, say, Star Wars, all of those started as fan fictions until they got recognized at, from the community as canon so like where's the divide i don't really 
I know that fan fiction has like maybe a stigma attached to it or something like that where like some people say that like it has very telltale signs and like tropes in the writing which is 100% true if you see like an author describe eyes as like colored orbs that's such <laughs> like a fan fiction specific thing but <laughs> i mean like ultimately what you're doing is writing and that writing is your own it doesn't matter if th- the stuff was pre-existing if you just change the names it would be fiction yeah <laughs> especially if you're using something like an au because that's not even canon compliant you did like 90 percent of the work on that one wait you're just using characters that's what's beautiful an... yeah let's dive into that what's an au is that <laughs> yeah. is that something re- is it or is it something that like is so obvious and i should just know no no, no it's not obvious AU at all. is an okay. alternate universe so it's taking characters oh. from something and putting it into when, when Mel says it, you get it, but like, yeah, I'm with you. I'm, these are the things Mel said before we started, uh, you know, recording. Tell me the things that I say that I would need to put captions in in editing. So you're doing a great job, Desiree. Uh, honestly, it's it's just because I want to know. So I'm just like, and, I, and sometimes I just need to know. I'm like, wait, AU, wait, hold on. What is that? Wait, what could it mean? So I'm like, sometimes I'm like, it's just easier to ask. I should just ask. But yeah, but yeah, like, I mean, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree because I mean, if you, if you think about what a lot of um, fan fiction authors, and I think that we should call them authors or writers, um, what they're producing, like a lot of people who become very famous really just took the exact same story that they were doing in their fan fiction writing and changed the names. Like that's what, how a lot of, you know, books started. Um, so it's where you kind of have to like ask like what you are a writer. You're not an ins- aspiring writer. You're a writer because you're putting in so much effort, especially if you have like fans and you're writing regularly and you're engaging with that audience. Like sometimes that's more exhausting than kind of sitting and working on a novel um, in your free time and your alone time. Um, when you have that pressure, like it's, it's more exhausting, you know? You're getting you're getting into the crux of a super interesting conversation. And I really want to hear Mel's thoughts on this, which is the thing that you're describing sounds like a job. And I'm not saying that like people need to get paid for everything that they do. Like uh, being like a, a stay-at-home parent is something that like um, we don't really compensate for correctly in society in many ways. And I'm not sure we should just pay people to do that. I'm not saying that would solve the problem, but there's a lot of kind of like imbalances in terms of how we um, think about certain work that people do and the value they get in return for it. Um, So that's a huge conversation, but narrowing it down to this one with fan fiction, if someone's having all these readers who loves like their rendition of a specific story and they're writing a lot, like to write a book takes time as we all know, one one could start to imagine how it might be nice if they could get paid for that work, especially if people are, are willing to do so. And there's an example that is quite interesting. That is with Bridgerton and two, primarily they, they got big on TikTok, but two, two creators who ended up developing basically a, a musical. They ended up having a Grammy like nominated and winning like, songs based off of Bridgerton and they sold a merch line and now they are being sued by Netflix and I feel personally very it's very tough for me to know how to feel I want to hear what you guys think because you have a one side like Netflix like has the IP and like if anyone could just take anything and kind of like rip it off and make money from it like, what would that do to an author of a story? Like, you could potentially have, in this case, like, their rendition of Bridgerton could become more popular. And then the creator of that would see, like, the creator of the original IP would see very limited of that. 
Um, of course, Netflix was actually trying to, send, to give them a licensing deal. So this is a very kind of extreme scenario. Um, mm-hmm. But then on the other side of things, you have these two, two like incredible creators who are exposing more people to Bridgerton and who were able to make money off of it, should they be able to do that? So taking the specific kind of ramifications of the circumstance out of it, because I think that like this one in particular, they may have overstepped only because Netflix wanted to work with them, at least reportedly. And they said no, which I think makes it a little bit tough. But let's just pretend that like these things happen all the time, which they do. What do you all think is right? If you have any ideas about how fan fiction writers should or should not be able to monetize slash commercialize their work. It's, I know it's a huge debate already in the fan fiction community. Do you want to go first, Desiree? I don't. So... I will just because I think my thoughts are going to be brief because so with this in particular, so it's, it's tricky when, when you get into more of the legal stuff. Um, I think art for the creation of something is always a positive and should always be respect, respected, period. You know, like, obviously, as long as you're not creating something that harms individuals or harms um, communities, right? Um but I think if you're creating something, whether that's based on a real life, um, something that happened to you, whether that's based on a fictional world you've created, whether that's based on a fictional world someone else created, art is always inspired by something else. It's just like you said, Michael, like you creating your own novel, you know, even though you were directly inspired by uh, another world, another universe, that was still your art at the end of the day. So that's how I feel about that I don't know how to respond in regard to the legal stuff of if you're taking something because really I mean the the Bridgerton show is based on the Bridgerton book so then is the is the is the musical based like so then it gets tricky of then okay well Netflix has the rights to the show and they're based off the show but then if they just created it and not gotten like asked for merch on it like would that be a different story so I don't know when it comes to that stuff but I don't know, Mel, what are, what are your thoughts on that? So for me, is this a question of like ethics or caution? You know, maybe share share ethics, because uh, I think it's just interesting. It's like an open debate that I think we're having as authors now. But then I think uh, it's really important to cover like the caution, like in the here and now with how things are. Okay. What, what can so, fiction writers not do? <laughs> related to this ethically i think if you worked on it i mean like the characters or whatever may be someone else's so like they have a right to maybe like look at your work and be like hey this is or isn't okay but you also have a right to monetize your work. Um, And it really, like, ethically, it can get kind of weird. Because, like, in my head, I'm kind of thinking about, like, okay, well, it, A, depends on what country you and the original creator of the work is. And um, it also depends on the, like, usage allowage of your creator so like some creators will allow fan works to be monetized and make a statement about it and then other ones will actively persecute them i'm pretty sure there have been a couple of authors who have persecuted fan fiction from existing just in general um so that is something to keep in mind but like also, you put that amount of work on, in it, so I feel like you should be able to monetize it. But I'm the kind of person that, like, if that happened to me, I would probably just, like, change all the names and maybe the setting and be like, okay, it's not yours anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> out of spite. Honestly, I'm kind of a, a little tricky like that, but it, <laughs> um, 
that's just what I would do. I couldn't imagine though for the like creators of that series. That's probably an interesting feeling because if you like, if you got a deal from Netflix to do a project, right? You wouldn't turn it down unless there was something in that contract that was against what you wanted to do like personally on a personal level so like that's why i'm kind of like you know it, they have a right to do it but is it shitty i think it is <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry can i swear i i'm trying not to swear as much as i can <laughs> um, you're first of all about that you're you're a guest. We are young, eager writers, but but I please, can bleep myself we've... in after, but like honestly, I kind of want you to bleep yourself just for fun, just for that like yeah. noise. But but <laughs> but you're fine. I think we're good. I think because our audience, by the way, people, our audience are teens and young adults, and I I work with teens and young adults, and I've heard what they say, and they say much worse. So you're probably good. <laughs> Cool. Because we have young in the name, I wasn't sure. Um, but yeah, I think not too young, not too young. Sure yeah, you know what I, mean. um, <laughs> I think like for both ends, it's a shitty situation because mm -hmm. no like creators gonna sit down and be like, okay they're using all of my characters all of my settings um all of the pre-existing work i did for context i'm just gonna sit down and let them and i think it also depends on like the length of the work too mm -hmm. because if it's like if you're publishing a book and actively like going against creators a creator's wishes right <sighs> like i don't know <laughs> um i will say though for like a lot of fan fiction writers even though they're like pressured into updating regularly a lot of them don't end up monetizing just hmm. in general because it is a concern. They just would rather have their work out there. And I think for a lot of, like, specifically fan fiction writers, it doesn't matter that they can't monetize it. Because ultimately, fan fiction is not seen as a professional endeavor in the writing industry. It's seen mm. as, like, a hobbyist project and things like that which is so interesting because like if you there's memes about this where like AO3 authors will come back after a hiatus and be like sorry I didn't update because this horrible thing happened mm. <laughs> and Wait. they're apologizing AO3 writers is archive of our own it's, oh okay yeah, that's, that's right okay yeah that's right okay so I'm AO3 connecting. writers will come back after maybe like a week and be like sorry my house burned down anyway here's this update <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and they're doing it when they're not monetized because ultimately like these people cannot stop writing yeah it's something they genuinely like have to do and a lot of them vent through it and like mm. get emotional satisfaction out of it as well so like i think for like a hobby if you can go and write fan fiction without being monetized, it's probably safer to do that. Mm. But if you're thinking about monetizing, monetizing on something like a platform that would give you potential like legal help or setting up something like a coffee where people can like tip you but it's not necessarily related, that would probably be the better than, like, a gate where, like, in order to access this content, you have to, like, pay this amount of money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or, like, yeah. a Patreon. Get a Patreon. Get a coffee. Coffee. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I think, so, this stuff is so important, and, like, I'm learning a lot about kind of, like, these do's and don'ts and, like, the the safety um, of fan fiction and how to stay safe and how to avoid kind of um, serious penalties and stuff. Um, and I think that stuff is so important to talk about. So hopefully, you know, people have gotten some some good advice, some good experience with this. Um, Maybe. <laughs> I know I never want to be like, be like I listen to us, but don't in case we get you in trouble. Like, uh, on this point, I'm not a legal expert. There, there's something really interesting happening because you're talking about um, like subscription is a way that people um, can can make money from from fan art and fan fiction, but there's this kind of licensing called CC zero, um, mm. which is the no rights reserved license and. Uh, there's a few projects that this is happening in where people are essentially investing into IP early on to own a certain token that gives them rights to it so that anyone, let's say there's like a hundred characters in this fictional world, you know, you can basically own the rights to one or two characters and then you could decide to sell those rights to rid of to other people or you could make those characters into your own world and it's enabling these like shared like creative communities to like build universes um very quickly and build up ip very quickly that gets people interested in it and this is like super super early days but um it, i think it could be an interesting future for fan fiction where cr a creator of a project says I'm going to write this story and I hope you all love it, but I'm actually going to let you guys like be able to participate in creating these other shared worlds. If you choose to take part like closely to my project, I didn't specifically use any like technological terms because I, I don't think they're very useful for us uh, when thinking about this, but I, I do think that's like a near future um, because Fan fiction didn't exist like 30 years ago, like in the sense of like, you could write fan fiction, but who was going to read it? Like there, you had I mean, no fan way fiction to share has that. has already exist, always existed. Like Dante's Inferno, Dante's Divine Comedy is a fan fiction, if you really think about it. that That's fair. <laughs> I guess in the context of like, the idea that people are able to get together very easily mm. and create their own derivatives of work online and and share it um, and have like everything is fan fiction to a certain extent, but like this idea of like, you know, forever to get your books in the hands of people, you had to go through a publisher, a publisher over the last hundred years would never publish something that was a direct derivative of someone's work and would mm. conflict with their copyright. But on the internet, you could kind of publish for better or worse, whatever you want. So that kind of like internet economy of being able to just share things and engage closer with your work and connect with other people. Like we're still in the early days of that. And I think we're going to see another iteration that actually benefits both creators and fans. And it may involve a new sort of licensing that's already existed, but people aren't using as much of, or it may involve some new technologies or just ways of thinking about storytelling. But I, I do think um, that we will 10 years, 20 years from now, not think about it as fan fiction fiction but instead just think about it as this is the this is fiction these are all stories hmm. yeah. yeah i think that's an interesting opportunity for like creators who are who are doing original work to sit down and have the thought during publishing or even before publishing like do i want fan works on this thing do I not want fan works on this thing? Because I do think like original creators do have the right to be like, please don't like diverge from this. I want this to be standalone. Mm. But ultimately, if it exists, there's gonna be stuff on it. It's just how it is these days. It's the internet you cannot stop anyone from doing 
whatever they want with your work, <laughs> especially if they're not monetizing it, especially even if they're like publishing it, you can't really expect them to be like, unfortunately in this day and age, if you have wishes, you can't expect them to be respected. Um, and that's where like the legality of things comes in. But I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Because I can see both sides. Yeah. It. What I'm learning is fan fiction in regard to um, it as an online community um, or even just a very large community um, is sticky because of how kind of things are monetized, how we function legally, like it becomes very confusing. Um, but I, I, it is also very exciting. Like this is so exciting. Like I'm so inspired, like go write fan fiction now. <laughs> um, Cause I think that's yeah, so it. cool. Yeah, or read it. It's so good. Like, I mean, and I've, I've heard of some that were really good. Um, I never got a chance to read them, but I know there were some that people were crazy about. Um, so I wanted there are to some ask who, are, who people are crazy about for the worst reasons too. <laughs> oh, I don't know any of those. In the other way. <laughs> I guess I need to know which ones, like, which are crazy. On I can a tell different... you after this. I just okay. don't want to say it on episode because i don't want to encourage people to look these up mm -hmm. that's probably so. safe so i wanted to ask um and mel is a question for you but michael feel free to answer as well how would one get started writing fan fiction or better yet what is some advice you have to writing fan fiction like how is it different from your standard fiction piece nonfiction piece poetry whatever like are there things that I have to know before I can start it? Uh, Michael, do you have any thoughts? Because I have a few pointers. <laughs> I think let's hear your pointers first. Okay. Um, yeah, so things like... If you haven't done any sort of writing before and you want to start writing fan fiction specifically i recommend um looking up some like notorious tropes first of all because those are always like very popular and you can always find examples of it that can like get your juice juices flowing but also writing things like one shots which are like self-condensed single chapters you don't have to write a full-length novel. It's just a scenario with a character um, and things like that. Looking at sites like Tumblr or Archive of Our Own that have tags, looking at the tags and seeing like, oh, what does this mean and how can I implement it into my own story? But also, if you're using something like Tumblr, you can actually have people send in like requests for you to write things so that mm. can also be like a good thing if you have writer's block but also that person who requested if you choose their request then they get a fancy little piece of writing <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a full-length fan fiction usually tumblr writings are like single pages or shorter so yeah that would be my advice if you want to look for fan fiction, um, I do recommend, like, I don't know, Cole does things or something. There's a YouTube channel that mm. has specifically fan fiction related content. She has a guide to commonly used fan fiction, like, verbiage and tags and stuff. I recommend looking that up so that you know what you're getting into before reading something. Because if you don't, and you read something like a dead dove story, like, you don't want that. <laughs> a dead dove story. I am I can guess what that means. <laughs> you do want it, though. Maybe you it, do. It, 
I don't Maybe think I do. you do, but like I don't think I do. For first time person, especially if you're new to like internet culture, I would not recommend. So like knowing what you're getting into is like the main thing when you start reading. Mm-hmm. I guess. Okay. And also that knowing those things helps you tag your own work if you end up writing, which is important because that's how people find you. Because okay. people will like enter into search engines a whole bunch of like fan fiction tags looking for that like one fan fiction that has like the slow burn enemies to lover romance in their <laughs> OTP. Like, <laughs> yeah. What okay. about you, Michael? Any advice? I think you just gave wonderful advice. You also gave wonderful advice for like um, writers who like want to like create their their own like OC content, like in that sense, like if you're wanting to create OC stories, like you should probably do similar things in the sense of like, maybe it's not tagging that people are searching up for, but people are probably searching for specific tropes. They want to see specific things. um, And it can be useful to kind of learn these things. And, and even writing um, one shots too. I have a friend, Amelia Rose is a romance author. And she writes a lot of one shots that she kind of uses to kind of figure out what story she's going to write. Sometimes she does it with characters already in her world. Either way, it's it's always a good thing for her and, the, and they're short and easy. So I, I love all your advice. And the only thing I'd add to it is that I think that if you're someone trying to think about, you know, what what fandom do I immerse myself in? I, I do think that... You, it's sometimes we can overthink these things like oh my god fan fiction excites me but i would just like like what mel's done like what i've done and sometimes unintentionally like just start diving down the rabbit hole of something you already love and once you dive down that rabbit hole i think utilizing the, sh- the kind of tactics that that mel said it would be really useful and um sometimes things can move fast people can be very opinionated um very very opinionated and it can be like very good and sometimes it can maybe be like not so good um it will make you a better writer in the long run but in the short run it, it it's easy to kind of feel like it's toxic at times you can maybe be paying attention to like the numbers and the comments and the engagement a lot and know that like as much as you can get caught up in the world you're creating and the people who start to enjoy it even if it's only one other person that's like kind of a crazy feeling that someone else is reading your work and responding to it try to take a step back. You can take breaks and your house doesn't have to burn down for you to take a break. And although if your house does burn down, I'd recommend taking a break too. That's horrible. Uh, (laughs) And just enjoy it. um, And don't like the stakes, especially because like fan fiction is not in your own world. Like the stakes don't have to be like absurdly high. Like you can make mistakes, you can take risks and try things out. And maybe you want to write your own work one day. Maybe you don't. You'll probably meet a lot of cool people out of it, though. You might make some new internet friends. Yeah. Adding on to that, like, in the realm of, like, don't get absorbed into the numbers, something I like to remind people of is, like, when you're on social media of any kind, not just writer social media, but social media in general, um, and this is the digital media person coming out sorry that's my background um but when you're like paying so much attention to the numbers and you see like oh i only got like 100 or 50 likes on this post or like oh only like 200 people saw this thing um just imagine that amount of people in front of you listening to what you have to say because that's what what's ultimately happening but because we're in like screens you can't see it so like Mm. having that context of these are real people and if i imagine every single one of these people in front of me that's a lot of people yeah (laughs) they're scary yeah too (laughs) yeah like i feel like immediately i would be like i mean i I kind of think that even about us recording this podcast. I'm like, I mean, 
I know right now on YouTube, we have like a max of like 40 views or something. But still, that's 40 people Imagine who have like seen like... people sitting in like an auditorium listening to like us talk about fan fiction. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's Thank terrifying. You to the viewers. Um, <laughs> also, when it comes to finding a fandom, I would use discretion. If something is getting too toxic for you, mm. don't be afraid just not to engage with people. Don't feel bad having to block or not respond to people because you feel like, oh, like I feel weird about this, but I feel weird about like potentially being mean. You're not being mean. You're just asserting your boundaries. Um, and that's needed. Right? snaps nice. for the boundary setting yes boundary so, work let's go yeah it's important though and yeah. it's something that it's a hard conversation too because i especially like you, you just you never want to be me like you have good intentions but yeah this this has been what what a podcast what a what an episode i want to talk about fan fiction with you every week but I will have to last. We're already through. like over time to we <laughs> should know. probably like wrap this up. That Mel Mel's like <laughs> realizing now, crap, I have to edit this. <laughs> That's true. That I'm is like, true. Because me and well, Michael, we have it we easy. Have, like a meeting after this. I it's also like I'm looking up there and I'm seeing the time like tick away and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> That's a lot to like sift through, especially since I'm gonna have to asterisk every time I like say a link or something. <laughs> oh, it's hopefully it's it's worthy content. It's this has been good. It's I feel it. I feel educated. I I feel ready to embrace the fan fiction community. Um, and on that note, and also, I don't know, <laughs> Michael. I have to address was it, what was that somebody singing in in your background because it was kind of cracking me up. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, I, it is. Okay, which I don't. I want to address it just so Mel keeps it in because it was just great. I just heard in the back like, oh, and I was like, wow, <laughs> what is happening over there? Yeah. But anyway, hear it. So like, it's day in college. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Thank you, Mel, for being here. We're going to bring you on for another episode because this was amazing. Obviously, as you can tell, we talked forever. Um, and yeah, guys, check us out. Subscribe. Follow us. Go to our website. Join our clubs. Meet Mel if you want to. Do whatever you want. Just come spend join time with us. Discord. I'm always there. Yes, join the Discord. I'm always Mel here wants every week, but no one sees me. True. She yeah, she does. But she she gets stuff done though. She she's in the chats when we record. That's so she'll be like she'll be putting stuff and we'll be like looking at it. And write fan fiction about our podcast. It's a challenge. You're able to. We won't oh my god, you. yes, please do. <gasps> that would be amazing. Oh my god, I wanna be in fan fiction now. Okay, okay, but I can't get too excited because I don't know who's gonna do it. And now I'm yeah, a little nervous. Maybe I will do it. Maybe I will be the one to step up and be like, yes, a Jesus. young eager writer's fan fiction. Yes. yes. <laughs> Where we're superheroes. I'm I'm manifesting this. <laughs> okay. I mean, anything can happen. Anything right? can happen the That's oh. what we have to say. We're taking people in our lives explicitly and putting them into fan fiction. I, I think this is enough. We, we've entered the end of the episode. We're going to trigger people now. Yeah. I know. Okay. Thanks for coming, guys. Love y'all. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.